Welcome and thank you for coming. We want to first uh, thank our sponsors of, the, of today's event. Uh, without it, of course, we would not be able to be present and uh, be able to share this with you. So uh, a great thanks to Big Data Energy Services, to London Hydro, and to Smart Energy Water, SEW. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, thank you all for helping out with this. We've got a couple things we're doing today, and we just want to get through a few things to let you know a little bit more about the Alliance, let you, let you know a little bit more about what we do, how we're formed, why we're formed, what, what we can accomplish for utilities, for consumers, uh, both residential as well as those in the commercial and industrial space, and then also for, uh, for just bettering the environment with the idea of knowledge. You can't, uh, you can't fix what you don't measure as the, as the saying goes. And so since it's already being measured, let's share these data, make them available to people so that they can do actionable things uh, for what they wish to do, whether that's reporting, uh, whether that's um, kind of uh, solar installations, whatever it is, they need the data. So we wanna make that available. And these folks that are joining us here today that you see on the screen, uh, they are, are going to talk about how they make piece of that comes to reality. Uh, so the very first thing we want to do is uh, introduce to you our chairman uh, of the board since 2015. So we, uh, at some point here, we're going to have to uh, <laughs> crown him or something. <laughs> and uh, we really appreciate it. Syed Mir from London Hydro, and uh, he's going to give you a little bit of the details about the Alliance and, and so forth. Welcome. Uh and thanks for the sponsors. And again, we are a nonprofit uh, organization and trying to work together to more or less uh, on a global basis, what we can do. And it's really the members that make it the difference. Like in a sense, it's the time and effort. I want to thank everybody uh, uh, for, for being members of, of GBA. Uh, and it is what we make it. And as I said, it's been a long journey. Uh, and I think we're looking to uh, now trying to see some of the value of, of, of open data as it goes through of the cycle and how important energy is becoming. Our vision is really about the fact that it's uh, everything to do with energy, including any time series data, water, resources, gas. It's one place that we look at everything and we look at and make sure that it's scalable and we, we have it very efficient. And as you can see, it's a critical enabler. So it's something that we, we feel that everything's there, such as the fact that when we're looking at EV, EV chargers, why we need to access data. So we need to sort of have a campaign and we're pushing towards trying to make that open. If you, it's really the customer owns the data. Utilities are a data custodian. And we, we're really focusing on trying to, three things in that space is around testing and uh, certification and really following the standard, influencing the standard. So a lot of players in this room are the experts who uh, help the standard make sure what we're doing is going consistently across at least North America right now and maybe beyond. We're looking at that. And it's about a place to want to shop, to go for all the marketing information, where we are. And the other thing that we really want to stress is we need use cases. We need to show what's happening everywhere else in, in this form. And, and as we go forward, to really help it uh, uh, help our customers. On that note, the board members uh, are, are here. Some of them are here today. And, and I'll quickly go through some of them here. Uh, Utility API, Daniel, is uh, he's the, probably the Guru, and he doesn't look it, but he's been around a long time on, on GBA. He's uh, been very vocal and uh, helpful in, in uh, speaking, speaking both ways, you know, commitment time to help where we go, but on, also on a very much on a technical level. I want to thank Daniel and Spice Share and putting in your time there. Uh, Travis is not here, but Angie has been there and, and really helping us, and, and he does some great minutes and keeps track of where we are. Uh, John, Jonathan's on here from HB Tracy, and so Enbridge has been a member as well uh, there. Uh, Bob Champlain is our newest SCW and uh, member. Thank you for, for joining and uh, helping us on that front. Live from Buildings, Jeff is here. And thanks again, Jeff, for uh, the examples you're going to talk about as well. Uh, EI, EI is uh, Bill is not here today, but Jay is here for Big Energy Data. Thank you very much. He's a local uh, Houston guy, right? So, you know. Do I know anything about it here? But, you know, we'll talk to him. David Willand from NIST uh, is, uh, is, is an active member and helping us and funds a lot of our stuff as well. So I want to thank there. And Chris Servin from uh, Department of Energy. And it looks like there will be more active involvement. Uh, and Jeremy may talk about that uh, as well. 
quickly, we've got about 40 members in the organization, uh, in the utility space, um, service providers, and government agencies, and, and what we uh, we connect back to. And so we're connected and, and continue to, to grow this way, hoping if we're looking at where you know, Ontario is going, if we're looking at we could be a target to try and double that in the next couple of years if we can. Just quick slide, I won't go through all the details. So this is where to say what is really the value prop from a utility, uni, co-op, third-party developers, system integrators, you know, property manager, government agencies. What are the things they're really looking for? Like Ron, for example, utility side, it's really about customer engagement. Like it's really about involving the customer. How do we provide choice in what we're doing? Around system integrators, this is our pitch to try and get, bring some of the players into the fold that it becomes help integrating and as we upgrade our new CIS systems, if we do any type of work, how do you keep that in mind when we're looking at, at open data? And likewise, for government and agencies, it's really supporting and, and efficiencies are there because you have a standard in place. And looking at new business opportunities for third party developments, that's where the entrepreneurs, anything built here can be run in Ontario looking at solutions that cross borders and boundaries. And so really it's up to us to look at, see where we can help and, and promote that. Right? The value prop is really on the left, as you can see a little bit more about the fact that it's the app store concept. How do you have something that goes in? It's all submitted data, all this, the monthly data that works for an all different spaces and spans. And again, the whole point is about customer choice and looking at how we can access that securely. Green Button just recently, uh, we had put this in when uh, we launched in, in November 1st in, in Ontario, uh, the minister, and, and we highlighted that there's 10 states that have got now the Green Button mandate. And part of that push as well includes Green Button certification, which is very key to having compliance to whatever standards in place. Uh, now Ontario has now adopted that and a lot of it, it will be done by November 2023 based on the current plans that are there. This is a slide that really talks about what our value creation is, talking about what the value of open data, to looking at IoT as data is coming in. And I really want to highlight where we're going. We're really moving towards what we call energy trading uh, platform, enabling that more as clean energy credits are traded. How do we track what's going on? What do we know what's going and focusing and helping decisions and helping everybody know about their carbon footprint and what they can do, especially with the adoption of EVs. It's going to be key to us in looking at that and DR integration is going to be key on what we're doing and looking at where we uh, we are now subsets and what we're looking at. So this is a group that we really want us to look at adopting, enhancing the, the, the standard as we go forward. Uh, just again, looking out a little bit on the fact that where we are, it's an outlook, it's a value creation that we're talking about. And it's also a day about three key things. It's about affordable notification. If you think about it, a lot of number of utilities in the room, it's really about even our customers don't take advantage of, uh, of assistance programs. And some of the things we look at only 25% adoption because people need to fill out the paperwork, do stuff. How do you make it, how do you make it simple for them to take advantage of programs before we do the disconnect? That's the value of bringing data, open data to the floor that we can make that happen. In economic development, our commercial industrial clusters got hit with COVID pretty hard. And what do we do? How do we look at it? How do we look at their bills on a weekly basis? How do you look at things where we're doing on what really make a difference and, and so forth? How did it reduce their demand or when they're looking at uh, various things? So it's really about economic development because we need those people to create jobs, right? And it's all part of the cycle that we have. The other part is, and we're focusing on, and I wanna thank Jay, I know he brought it forward on the sense around, how do we start supporting ESG? You know, it's, it's all around the fact that what we're talking about is, as while we have affordable energy and economic development, the key piece now we need to look at is, and it brings it together. The, it's on the environment, uh, it's about social responsibility uh, around how do we track where the, some of the, the savings are and what we're doing there. I think ESG is going to play a big role, and I think uh, the Green Button Standard can play a big role here because we can be the place where you can verify the results, you can enable trading of those carbon credits. And we're looking at open access and verifiable based on the mission of, of promoting open data. And I'd like to end with the fact it's, it should always be about the customer. It should be, everything should be turned around and, and thought in terms of the customer. And we're talking about EVs. I've, I've had some discussion with people here about EVs. It's, you got to put them into their seat to see if you want to be rescheduled. I mean, and you do, how do you make sure you have enough charge? How do you make sure that you're not 
getting an ID uh, ripped off when you go to a public charging station and realize later it's 20 bucks and it should have been only 10 bucks or five, right? I mean, it's those things that we're opening ourselves up to that we need to make sure we're ready to look. So where there's really what we would call customer choice. Customer choice has to be the fact that you're giving choices to customers and looking at things. The other part, it has to be convenience. There has to be the time and presence and too much data at the right time through notifications, through apps, through what we can do to make them happen. And lastly, it's got to be control. We got to move away from just reporting on what the bill is to enabling change so that you can change it. And this really makes a difference when you're talking about the social responsibility piece. How do you get data to the agencies that can help you get that data, manage your bills and what's going on? Because right now the renters don't care about their energy consumption because there's, there's not a connection that it really, who's paying the bill. So even revolving tenants and so forth are gonna be key parts. So really we're defining what is the customer to be broader and the community aspect of things as well. So keeping that in mind, this is why we're looking at as our strategic outlet. I'll hand it over to Jeremy. We have a, a great deal to tell you about standards and so forth, but we're not going to go down the rabbit hole of boring you in, in the minutia. But I do want to say, and this is not in my slide set, that we have a, a technical group like this meeting. It is open to anybody who wants to participate and get involved and learn about the standard, contribute to the next version of the standard. Uh, we meet online on, uh, on Tuesdays, um, typically once a month or every four weeks, actually. So it's, shot, it's just a little bit. Um, but when there are heavy topics that we really want to cover, we'll meet it. We'll meet more often. So, um, uh, but we're, we're typically on Tuesdays. So look for us online. You can find it. The group is called Open ADE, and that's Automated Data Exchange. It's a, it's a name that predates the, the term green button. So we'll tell you about, a little bit about that. But, um, but that group you can find online at openade.org, uh, or you can go to the greenbuttonalliance.org website, and you can find it there. Uh, all the meetings are always listed on the right-hand side of our webpage. So on that right-hand side, you'll find when the next meeting is going to be, get all the logistics. And then uh, when a meeting begins, you can actually click the button and begin, uh, begin right, jump right on into the meeting with whichever service we're using, typically a Zoom or, a, or something of that nature. Uh, so I want to tell you a little bit about the green button standards, only to let you know a little bit about the flavors. We actually have two different flavors. Both of them taste great, but the first one is uh, called Connect My Data. The second one is called Download My Data. The Connect My Data uh, allows a third-party company to assist that consumer in being able to do something relevant with these data whether that's uh, size up a solar array, whether that is uh, to do some reporting for, uh, for their city or town, whether that is uh, just to uh, shed peak time of rates or determine whether peak uh, going on to a time of use rate is good for them, right? Uh, balancing gas against uh, electricity, those types of things, looking at their water usage. Uh, so all of that's available with a third party that provides an application to help them. You take that third party uh, application and it, and it brings the customer back to the utility for them to enter in credentials on the utility safe, uh, the website safely and without sharing those credentials with the third party. And then the third party is given authorization in a combination between the utility and that end user, that customer, to be able to access data on their behalf to provide them the services. The download my data is where a customer will log into their utility portal, select the data that they want, download it into a green button file, and then share that green button file by email or upload or what have you uh, with a third party to be able to do some actionable things with it. So a couple different flavors, not all utilities offer both currently, but, uh, but we certainly are encouraging them to do, do so. And uh, people are finding that, uh, that that's just simply one of those uh, things that are going to happen over time. If you look here on the screen, you'll get a chance to see a few different things here. We have uh, a journey that, uh, that you take for each one of them. So if you start here on the left-hand side, you'll see in Connect My Data, the journey is, uh, again, the logging in, the authorizing, uh, or verifying that you're actually that person, then the authorizing of the website, uh, <coughs> sharing of the data, and then, of course, the third party can continue to 
to obtain the data on the behalf of, of the customer. And then on the download side, you can see that this is a, a journey that, uh, that requires the customer come back again, maybe monthly, uh, maybe quarterly, uh, maybe uh, only once. But again, it depends on what their needs are for that. So with the Connect My Data, we find that uh, people are getting data every day. And with the Download My Data, people are getting it monthly or, or uh, seldom or just a one-off for a solar installation or something like that. Okay, so now I want to tell you a little bit about the standard itself. The Green Button Standard was created in a, in a, in a group of folks uh, who are industry experts within uh, a number of different realms. All of, all of the standards that went into these things were compiled with, uh, with a number of folks who were involved in the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel once upon a time. Uh, the uh, early efforts of the NIST Priority Action Plan groups to stabilize the internet uh, of, of energy. And then uh, all of that culminated in, the, um, uh, in what was eventually going to be called the Green Button. And it was uh, given that moniker by Anish Chopra, the CTO of the U.S. under the Obama administration, modeling it after the Blue Button, which was uh, a way for veterans uh, to download their medical information and share it with civilian doctors. So we kept a long button theme with the different colors and, uh, and created it here. The whole idea here, as this was spearheaded as an effort, a uh, public-private effort where the government was involved and the, uh, and the private industry was involved, was simply to make this an open standard, one where people weren't uh, burdened by all sorts of different um, uh, patents and other types of things to be able to implement this. And they wanted to make sure that you were able to put it all together in a way that would allow you um, uh, flexibility moving forward. So we use a lot of off-the-shelf tools. We're using uh, XML, we're using uh, OAuth 2.0, we're using security uh, of uh, TLS 1.2 or higher. Uh, we're constantly having these things checked out again. We even go through uh, reviews with NIST that, uh, for security compliance uh, on, on the types of ciphers that we're using. So the security is in place uh, and it's off the shelf. The connectivity is in place and it's off the shelf. The sharing, the authorization is off the shelf. So the whole idea is that this is a compiling of those technologies into a standard methodology to allow anybody to play. Um, a little bit on the certification overview. I want to give you a touch about what else we do. So you've heard that we kind of drive the technical side of things, but we also do a certification because one of the early problems that the government discovered was that people implementing the standard all interpreted it just a little bit differently. And so we wanted to ensure that it was interpreted the same way. And so a certification program was born to do just that. And so the certification program was... Uh, was something that we, we started off uh, in 2015. We kicked it off with, uh, with download my data certification. And then we went to connect my data certification after that point, and we moved forward with some great new enhancements in that. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So there's a lot of technical pieces on here. I'm not, I'm not going into, into all of those technical pieces for you, but what we are gonna show you is a couple certain technical aspects. Uh, we have mandatory functional blocks, and functional blocks are these things that we test for. Does it include interval readings for electricity? Does it include interval readings for gas? Uh, is, there, is there net metering? Uh, is there forward and reverse metering? Those types of things. And when we check for those, we check to ensure that they are done according to the standard. Some things are mandatory and some things are not. And different jurisdictions will make certain things mandatory or not as well. So uh, we wanna make sure that we provide the, the flexible system that is necessary to do all of this, but we also want to make sure that in that flexibility, there are some standardized ways of doing it. So that's our goal with the certification. We also have uh, a, a, an automated portion of the process, as well as a, a I, I should say, a, a visual and, and inspection part of the process that we use. So that's an important piece uh, that is uh, handled by our uh, technical manager. Um, back at the back at the, at his headquarters, his offices. We're a remote uh, organization as well, so we work uh, we work remotely across the North America. And then I want to point out a couple quick things here. We also have some self service, not self certification, but some self service tools. So this is a way for you to 
get a little bit uh, more knowledge about what that, uh, what your utility implementation does. Does it meet the standard uh, to that point at least and what you can test on your own? So you select some function blocks, you, you test your output files and things like that and see if it really meets the standard. So we, we make a lot of this stuff free and open and available to anybody to use to test. Uh, and then the program itself, uh, you can go into the program and get through certification without failing it and having to go through the certification again. You'll know a little bit ahead of time. And you can even uh, work with us and we'll, we'll provide you some technical support. Members get technical support as part of their membership under the uh, participating and the sponsorship tiers. But we also make it available in an hourly basis to members and non-members. So there's no obligation to join uh, as a member, but that's where the community is. That's where you'll find marketing opportunities, be able to, to work with other companies, uh, hear what's going on from behind the doors. We meet every four weeks uh, from the standpoint of an entire group of our membership, and we make that uh, as, as valuable as possible in a one hour stint to everything that's going on from policy to marketing to technical, all in one big dump every four weeks and, uh, and, and people love it. So yeah, it's one of those things we, we really love to do. As you'll see in the far right lower corner here of the, of the screen, we have uh, uh, our brand new certification mark that's available for certification. It is to the latest uh, set of standards. This is the, uh, the North American Energy Standards Board's uh, REC 21 is what it's called, the REC, REQ uh, 21. This is uh, the official moniker for the standard of green button. We are on version 3.3. And now we have uh, something that we do uh, called testing for retail customer data. We were able to test for usage data. And now we're also testing for the retail customer data that is a part of that, of that standard. And this is uh, something that is extremely exciting because uh, many organizations have been waiting for the opportunity to get into the certification queue to be able to be tested for this because there are several mandates around North America that require it as part of uh, utility implementation. So we're thrilled to announce that this has officially been uh, put into service at the end of last week. And we did not let ourselves rest at that point. We went ahead and immediately began to certify devices in the queue, uh, implementations in the queue. And so you'll see here the first ones that came out of the lot. You'll see uh, the first one uh, ever to come out with the first 3.3 with the usage data and retail customer, uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy out of, out of California. Uh, next, we have London Hydro out of Ontario, uh, first one out of Canada, and now uh, also the first one meeting the, uh, the, the mandate up there for utilities. So that's a fantastic thing we want to announce. We have Fort Collins Utility in, uh, in Colorado, so it's not just the, uh, the IOUs out there. We have Peninsula Clean Energy, uh, another CCA along with Silicon Valley uh, Clean Energy. Uh, we have National Grid uh, in New York and uh, in-wind utilities in Ontario. So uh, we, are, we are making some inroads. We have others in the queue right now, and we're Sorry. absolutely thrilled. And we have more on the way, uh, more community choice aggregators, more, uh, more munis, uh, co-ops, and, uh, and of course, uh, IOUs available to them. So this is our thrilling announcement for, uh, for this uh, week, for this year, to start the year off right, getting uh, post-pandemic, and we're thrilled about it. So without uh, further ado, I want to bring up the people who made these happen and make other things happen around the country. And, uh, and the first one I want to bring up is our vice chair, uh, Daniel Ressler from Utility API. Daniel uh, has been instrumental in helping us pull some of this together. Daniel, we have a, a mic up here for you if you want to start popping that on while I uh, took your horn a little bit. He uh, he has been an instrumental part on, especially on the technical side of things for us um, in the Open ADE task force, working diligently with those uh, folks to bring enhancements to the, to the platform and to the standard. And so uh, uh, his company uh, had a big hand in some of the things up here. I won't steal his thunder, but I'll, uh, I'll bring him up here to, uh, to let him talk a little bit about utility API and, uh, and all of that. So without further ado, uh, Daniel, Russell, please, sure. utility API. 
Howdy, I'm Daniel Ressler. I'm the founder and chief technology officer at Utility API. Uh, Utility API has been around for over eight years now. Um, we are a uh, data services company, um, servicing both third-party companies and utilities in, across the US and uh, most recently in Canada. And I would like to tell you a little bit about the kind of like traction that we have seen across the Green Button landscape as we've rolled out Green Button Connects, um, as well as some lessons learned and use cases that we have also come across. So um, as a bit of a timeline, uh, Utility API received a grant in 2017 from the Department of Energy to build a Green Button Connect, specifically a Green Button Connect that was accessible for small solar companies. So there at the time um, and still present, uh, a huge portion of the distributed solar install installer market is a very long tail of small companies. There are thousands of these companies out there. A lot of them do not have technical resources. And our effort was to try to create a green button connect that was accessible to people without technical resources. Because green buttons is a highly technical standard. Um, if you don't have a software engineer on staff, you can you know, run into problems when you're trying to connect to a Green Button API. Um, and our first uh, launch of Green Button Connect was a pilot with Silicon Valley Clean Energy. You saw them before, so we started that in 2019. Um, then we have had, since then, three more deployments, one with National Grid, one with Fort Collins in Colorado, um, and one with uh, Peninsula Clean Energy also in California. And so we have four live deployed working Green Button Connects to date. And then we have also recently added um, through a partnership with Utility Smart and um, Screaming Power uh, deployments of Green Button Connects uh, for two utilities in Canada. And then as Jeremy mentioned, we have um, all of our US deployed uh, Green Button Connects were, were recently certified um, as retail customer compliant. So you can get all of that, uh, all of that data using a standards compliant API. And so, and we also have um, several IOU contracts and other uh, utility contracts in the works, um, but they haven't necessarily been launched yet. Although um, we do plan on getting all of those deployments uh, certified as well. So that's a little bit of the pipeline for utility API, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm, a, as uh, Sayed mentioned, I'm the vice chair on the board. Uh, we also have uh, patents around uh, securely sharing uh, utility data outside of the Green Button standard, because uh, as Jeremy mentioned, it's a open access standard, so there's no sort of patent encumbrance or anything like that around the Green Button standard. Um, and also, I frequently participate in regulatory proceedings. So that's one of the key things about this industry is customer data access is uh, private data. And so disclosing it or obtaining authorization to treat it often involves regulatory, uh, regulatory participation. So as far as utility API, uh, we're a uh, vendor. We, as I mentioned, had a bunch of uh, interactions with the Department of Energy. Um, and gone through all the various security audits. We're a sponsor member of the Green Button Alliance, and uh, we just closed our Series A of $10 million. So um, a little bit about the people who use Utility API. Utility API is used by, uh, I guess, uh, several thousand uh, behind the meter companies. So these are kind of the small, um, or actually even large, Tesla's on there, um, companies who use us to obtain customer data. Um, a significant portion of that is through the Green Button system, um, through some of our Green Button deployments, and that is increasing as we build up more and more uh, Green Button deployments. So you can uh, imagine, like a lot of these companies, morphing from um, getting data through whatever means necessary to getting data through a standardized process. And so that's kind of the, the tr uh, trajectory that we see this industry going. Um, as far as Regulatory proceedings, um, many different states in the US, um, also different working groups, various working groups, there's several working groups in the Ontario system that we uh, participate in. Um, for California specifically, we were, one of the ones I wanna highlight on this is the Customer Data Access Committee. Um, that actually was, uh, that was a working group that was originally brought forth because uncertified green button deployments were not adequate and a lot of third parties raised a significant amount of uh, frustration. And so a committee was formed to 
improve the usability of those processes, especially for demand response providers in California. And we actually were able to correct and streamline a significant part of the user experience for those deployed systems in California through, through participation of that uh, committee. So the user flow diagrams and all that sort of stuff that you see probably floating around um, originally probably came from stuff that we did in that particular committee. So uh, a little bit about actual numbers. So we have over 200 third parties registered our, at our existing Green Button Connects. We have over 5,000 uh, customer media shared through those systems. We have over $200 million worth of bill data shared through those systems and over a billion kilowatt hours worth of data shared through those systems. And so that's all securely shared using customer consent driven stuff. And so that's a, that's a pretty exciting metric to see that there is not really anything. Um, it is very possible to achieve scale using uh, green button systems for the customer consent and data sharing. So that's, a, that's kind of a, some really impressive metrics. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch um, hands, and in my last few minutes, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about some of the lessons learned and things that we have found by deploying these systems. And so um, the first, the first like completely mind blowing thing that we learned off of these deployments is that there are actually three categories of use cases for a green button system. And only the first one is the one that everybody kind of thinks of as the traditional green button connect sort of thing, which is third party data access, right? So third party data access is when, you know, the customer wants to share data with an external entity and they want to offer continuing access. So that you're going to, you know, authorize through green button and then that data is going to be made available through the API. And what we found when we deployed that is all of a sudden we started getting inbounds from first parties, right? And so while a first party, which is the, you know, utility customer, they would, they could go to their portal and manually download the data through the download my data system. But a large portion of those commercial customers are increasingly becoming energy sophisticated or very technologically sophisticated. And so they are wanting to to have programmatic access to their own data, whether it be for carbon accounting or, um, or uh, benchmarking purposes, that sort of thing. So we actually see a, a fair amount of usage through these deployments from first parties just authorizing themselves just so they can get automated access to the data, which is uh, quite surprising, but that's definitely a distinct category. Um, and then finally, the, the third one was also interesting. We started getting calls from other divisions within the utility saying, hey, I need to provide access to my vendors that I have a contract with that I'm working with. And I currently am just downloading the data in a spreadsheet and emailing it to them. And in order to fulfill that, fulfill that mandate, can I just give them access to the Green Button API and they get the data that way? Um, and so like, for example, if you are an energy efficiency program manager and you need to see whether or not a customer is on the right rate plan in order to approve them for their rebate, well, that data is available on the API. So why not just use this API? So it's basically turning this API inward and allowing uh, utilities to use it for their, own, for their own programs, which is quite fascinating. So specific examples, um, the traditional one is there all of the utilities again, oops, right? Uh, the utilities again, and we marked the certified, but we don't have the little 3.3 RC thing on it yet. So uh, definitely have to add it to, to that slide. So that's the first use case. For the second use case, I wanted to call out Peninsula Clean Energy. They specifically focused on this use case for their large commercial customers. And that um, we literally had one of those large commercial customers come to us and be like, I cannot believe that I like lived in a world before I had automated access to data because the amount of time that I had to spend every single month compiling all of these spreadsheets was enormous. And now I just have a Python script and it just like does it. It's amazing. So it has been a real paradigm shift for uh, account managers and commercial, commercial engagement people at, at Peninsula Clean Energy. Um, and then for category three, I wanted to highlight two programs. The first one is called GridShift, and that's with Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Um, this is a program where you can download a Silicon Valley Clean Energy branded app. 
Um, and it's run by a company called ED.energy. But, uh, but you can download this app. And during the app, you authorize access and get an access token using the green button API um, that is branded as SVCE Data Hive. And you can, uh, you can authorize the access. The app will then collect the historical data, analyze it, and then also connect with your EV charger and then allow Silicon Valley Clean Energy to change your charging profile to better fit when the grid is cleanest. And so you can reduce your carbon footprint by charging when carbon is lowest on the grid. And so this allows you to basically do load management with that secure consent and setup sharing, um, setup access for, for apps. And so that's very exciting as well. And then the last thing, that, oh, a little over time, uh, last thing that I wanted to uh, call out was Fort Collins benchmarking system. Fort Collins has a uh, 5,000 square foot benchmarking mandate in place. So every building over 5,000 square feet, which is actually like a tiny building, that's like a less than a bowling alley, um, can is required to send their data to not only the city, but now also in this last year, the state. The state is now requiring benchmarking access and they have to send it in an Energy Star Portfolio Manager. And a lot of those buildings require customer consent because they're under the threshold for aggregation privacy. And so if you're under, I believe, four meters, you have to get individual consent from the tenants and green button is used to obtain that consent and compile the data and then send it into the system. And so that offers, you don't have to file paper forms, you don't have to email somebody and get their signature, you don't have to track down consents, it's all automated through, through the benchmarking system. So that's really exciting use case for um, for Green Button and OAuth 2.0. So thank you very much. Uh, if you are a utility and you are interested in uh, rolling out a Green Button, I would love to tell you about the use cases. Please feel free to email me. Um, and just as a reminder, there are use cases beyond just third party data access and we've seen significant traction in those, in those use cases as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I wanted to uh, uh, quickly let you know that we have a couple of things uh, more to talk about here. Each one of these uh, individual companies are members of our organization. We welcome you to become a member of our organization as well. If you are so interested, we'd love to be able to create these speakerships for you and these opportunities. And, uh, and so this is the kind of venue that we want to do. We want to be able to put it up on our YouTube and share it with the world and, and get your message out. So if you're interested in membership, contact me. Uh, I will uh, I will yield the floor now because we have better speakers up here. Vera's going to come up here and speak for uh, Utila Smart and uh, and kind of share 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 what uh, what they do up north and and uh, and actually across North America. Thank you, Jeremy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, many of you are coming from the same part of the world I'm from, and. Uh, <laughs> And we wondered, you know, why did we have to travel all the way down here? But uh, <laughs> to me, but um, uh, it's a great opportunity to talk about the green button solution, specifically about the Dual Smart Green Green Button Toolset solution that uh, we have uh, we have been developing and rolling out to utilities in Ontario in partnership with Utility API and uh, and Stream Power. Um, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what Utilismart is all about and how come we've got involved with, uh, with Green Button. So we've, uh, we've been um, in the business since uh, officially 2002, so a little over 20, uh, 20 years. We've been providing solutions to uh, utilities, uh, municipally owned uh, IOUs and cooperative utilities throughout North America and Caribbean, including Caribbean. And um, our solutions are basically meter data, advanced meter data management with utility analytics, providing utilities an integrated system for data driven decision making. So that's sort of a, a summary, a short summary of the uh, big story of who we are and what we do. We are, uh, we are present uh, uh, in, um, as I said, in, um, in uh, primarily in Canada and the United States, although we serve some Caribbean countries, and uh, primarily utilities and large loads. 
And uh, electric, water, and gas is basically our uh, um, uh, our solutions are supporting those uh, utilities. Um, about the Green Button commitment, we've um, we've uh, joined Green Button Alliance in 2001. Uh, we've decided to um, to democratize the data and uh, and give it to the world so they can utilize it to um, to create various uh, to help us achieve various different objectives, such as uh, create jobs specifically in Ontario. Uh, fuel innovation in Ontario so that various different uh, solutions can be developed and uh, exported and allow utilities to use their customers' data to, um, to empower third parties who would provide value-added services to their customers that utilities couldn't do. And uh, as a first step in our green button adoption process, we implemented green button download my data as part of our commercial industrial energy manager portal, which um, which has been utilized for many years and many thousands of commercial industrial customers, typically greater than 50 kilowatt man, uh, large commercial and industrial customers throughout Ontario. Uh, we've also joined the OEB, uh, OEB's initiative uh, to help, help define and help implement the green button as a standard in, uh, uh, in Ontario. Uh, we've uh, we formed a partnership uh, with Utility API and Screaming Power in order to make this happen. Uh, we've uh, we realize you know the three teams uh, when they get joined into one they can uh, deliver something that's going to be a cost effective, functional, and something that uh, that will uh, create an exceptional customer engagement. When I when I when I mentioned customer in the context of Green Button, I'm thinking about third parties because third parties are primary user, primary customer of, the, of, the, of any Green Button solution. A um, few words about, about us. I, I mentioned that uh, the companies, I'm not sure if these slides are going to be shared later on. And that's why I've added some extra content so that uh, those who, um, who are here and those who are uh, participating online can learn a little bit about our individual expertise, utility API developing green button solutions, interconnect uh, connectivity solutions uh, between utility systems, utility smart loss of experience on the backend data integration running MDM, MDM systems, integrating it with GIS, CIS, AMI, AMR, multiple AMIs and AMRs and uh, building multi-speak multi interfaces with utility systems and then screening power invested a lot of uh, into R and D uh, in uh, uh, customer engagement as well as uh, as green button uh, pilots. How our solution for Ontario works? It's basically we can describe that in in three different steps. You know, step one is a third party setup where third parties would uh, uh, access the solution um, and uh, fill in the reg registration form. Typically, uh, within five minutes, the third party registration is done. Five minutes or less, depends on uh, how descriptive they want to be about their services. So five uh, minutes or less, third parties connected and they have access to data to start the sandbox data so they can start developing their, their applications. Uh, we are unique in that way that we provide um, a, a sample test data and sandbox environment where they can start immediately developing their solutions. And uh, in parallel, the utility has ability to let out every third party in terms of uh, who they are, uh, what are they going to promote them to live and approve them to start providing services to their customers. So uh, in step two, basically to the uh, approves them to go live and they become part of the utilities uh, directory that, uh, that allows their customers basically to see who is providing those third party while you added services that they can utilize. So for example, let's suppose I want to I want to become a prosumer and I want to put a solar panels and battery storage. I have option to go um, to Google it and try to find myself, you know, who can do that, or I can go to um, to my utility directory and find who's already connected to my uh, my uh, my data so they can provide me a quote, an assessment, an ROI, ROE, so I can make a, I can make an informed decision. Uh, or I can find a third party somewhere out there in the world. And ask them to connect to this uh, this uh, repository in five minutes, so they can get my data and uh, and provide me uh, 
uh, analytics and a quote about those services that they can provide. The step three is energy customer approving the data, data access, data sharing. There's a position form, a position receipts. Uh, we, we have, in Ontario, we have extensive discussion about audit trail. Uh, who authorizes whom, you know, storing that in some form of a receipt, you know, ability to revoke access at any time, ability to have a flexibility on enabling data sharing for, um, for three months for worth of data or, or two years. So being really flexible, our solution is very flexible along those terms in terms of providing a full audit trail in that process, all those receipts is accessible by customer, utility, and third party at any time. And step four is um, control data access through dashboard or API. And I'll talk a little bit more about the um, um, competitive advantages that we developed to, uh, to enable not only a minimum Ontario uh, regulated requirement, but to go beyond, you know, to, to fuel innovation, to support things uh, things uh, beyond the current knowledge. Um, I've listed some of these competitors. That I won't go through every single one of them, but I, I just want to emphasize that we have a high performing solution, um, innovative and future pro solution that uh, supports Green Button web services, JSON web services. It's basically a one stop shop for um, user personas that Daniel uh, uh, identified earlier, and we did we did uh, realize that there is uh, there are more um, more larger uh, commercial and industrial customers who are who are becoming prosumers. They want to develop their own apps. They want to automate their processes. We have some customers that hire uh, five or ten people strong energy efficiencies improvement teams. And they're tasked to find those efficiencies and improvements and they started developing applications and they're becoming a third party themselves. Um, I guess uh, Sandbox I mentioned there um, and it's um, a secure solution, uh, utility API front end, utility smart back end, utility smart ISO 27001 certified, utility API front end and, and all operations, so SOC 2, type 2 compliant. Um, and, um, and also, um, a solution that uh, that uh, we utilize. Uh, I have to mention, Screen Screen Power is, is providing us tremendous uh, support with uh, design and uh, uh, audit trail and auditing all those transactions to ensure that uh, that, that end user, which is primarily, as we said, you know, third party or or consumer itself, uh, receives the uh, the uninterrupted and exceptional experience. Uh, value proposition of our solution is it, it goes back uh, into cybersecurity, uh, performance, scalability, and uh, and being able to uh, to have the uh, a host fully hosted and operated infrastructure that utility basically is just a flip of a switch, you know, that uh, satisfies requirements, uh, enables regulatory requirement, but at the same time. They enable themselves at minimum investment and minimum administration on a go-forward basis to uh, to take advantage of the uh, of what solution brings to them. Uh, we operate our secure infrastructure in the uh, Auto London, Ontario, replicated to uh, Markham, Ontario, Tier Three uh, data data facilities. Again, SOC two, Type two uh, certified uh, data centers. And, um, and this is, I, I kind of rushed a little bit. I wanted to get to this particular slide here to explain to you a little bit more about architecture of our remote tool set. So, so we, um, as you can tell uh, by the titles of these uh, boxes that utility API uh, front end, utility smart back end, we have universal data translation system that, that, that is capable of deriving data and bringing data from multiple data repositories at the same time. So it uses multiple, why is universal? Because it speaks multiple languages. You know, some repositories store data and can be retrieved using multi-speak web services. Some of them are custom web services. Some of them green button at the back end. Some of them are pretty much data push. Um, part of our back end, the uh, universal data translation system uh, include, uh, is the, at the heart of it, it's a data dispatcher that, that identifies it knows at any point of time in which data repositories uh, a particular meter data exists. 
And what happens is that quite often that there is data for one meter and multiple data repositories. What this dispatcher can do is then elect to use uh, priority one repository, priority two. And what why is that done is because not every data repository receives data at the same time. And not, um, not every data repository is available 24 seven. Uh, some repositories go into the blackout periods and they're not available period to uh, accept any, uh, any data requests. So in order to maximize uh, uh, data availability and, uh, and oral system uh, availability, we've, uh, we've created a, a dispatcher that can actually go to the secondary data repository if the primary one isn't available. Um, and then we created the spokes for billing data and uh, spokes for um, uh, for uh, consumption data, and um, as well as the auditor that, that I talked a little bit about earlier uh, uh, that uh, Stream Power helped uh, tremendously with. And uh, and then we have the authenticator and data translation that brings in data from various different formats, standardizes it, pass it, pass it on to the uh, utility API front end. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Yeah. Very appreciate it. That was great. Uh, we have next up on our docket uh, uh, Jeff Handler from Logical Buildings. He's going to uh, come up here and give you a little bit uh, about his stuff. All set, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for providing the uh, the venue and the leadership for Green Button. Alliance uh, and NCF for the leadership as well, and our technology partners like Dan. Um, if it wasn't for Dan, we can't do a lot of the things that we do. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, 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 an alliance that has stakeholders that's very collaborative, and each one plays an important role. Um, one of the roles Logical Buildings plays is where the rubber meets the road, but I like to say where the electron meets the cloud. And by providing the, the tools um, through mobile of, of impacting the environment, and people and empowering all sorts of buildings, homes, users, uh, everybody um, to, to take action. And we're going to talk about that and how we do that. So a little bit about logical buildings. Um, we're a company that has multiple interdisciplinary uh, capabilities to take this data and make it very valuable. On a, on, a, on a wholesale FERC level, we're a power marketer. So that means we're able to interact with energy capacity and slurry markets. We're a demand response provider. We're a curtail, curtailment service provider. We're members of ISOs. We are involved in utility programs and we have engineers that are part of uh, you know, state uh, energy uh, incentive programs. So we can take all this great data that we've been talking about and make it valuable to end users, make it valuable, whether it's to help them make their buildings or their homes more energy efficient, make it valuable in terms of saving on a day-to-day -day basis cost. And especially today, as energy has pretty much quadrupled in the past year, um, you know, very impactful to have this information. Um, and also uh, most impactful with a product we're gonna talk about in these cases is Grid Rewards. Grid Rewards is a product that we launched in New York, we just now expanded to California, which enables the mass market to now provide grid service. Um, about a year and a half ago, the Department of Energy, the GSA, the Gen General Services Administration, uh, we were awarded with three other companies to be what they call, they, they come up with three letter acronyms, the DOE. Uh, they came up with a new one called a GET. I was a GET. It's a grid interactive and efficient building platform, which basically means you have a, a cloud platform that enables on demand to provide notification to an end user or a building to load shift, load shed, to modulate distributive energy resources, as we call DER, another three letter acronym, um, to provide energy efficiency. And what we like to say is to integrate what we do is integrating AMI, smart meters, green button connect with IoT to reduce CO2. And we think what that does is create lots of value to society and to people's bottom line, which we'll describe. Um, I want to bore everybody, went through all the other presentations of the 
the value proposition of, of, of you know, Green Button Connect and having data, an interesting piece of that also amongst the utilities. Are there any utilities here in general audience here? Anyone raise their hand? Great. Which utility are you with? Okay. Oh, All right. It works. Go London. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that one. <laughs> we, we know that. What, 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 <laughs> well, yeah, what, one other aspect of, of data is like portability. Like, I know I have an iPhone. So when I got here in Dallas, I got the car. I plugged it in. I had CarPlay. Mm -hmm. I could take my content with me. You know, whatever. I, I I check with my mobile key. It's like a Marriott. You know, door opens. You know, Netflix mobile thing, content, you know, it's all portable. Well, we want to see that with our energy and our preferences as well. Like you like it at this degree, you want to use that much carbon, you like to use that much of, you know, solar, wind, that's common. And, and the way we get there and making that data portable is first having access to it, to know what your preferences are. And we're learning a lot about that. We're happy to say what we're doing in, um, in Con Ed, we've crossed the 10,000 line of green button authorizations. Huge mark, huge. I have to tell you, um, before we showed up to the, to the table, you know, there are only 2,700 meters that were involved in demand response prior to 2021. And we've you know, almost put that portfolio. Um, incredible, incredible data set, incredible, um, you know, achievement just for New York City and Westchester and Rockland residents and growing. Um, only thing that's in the way of that number being bigger, people just don't know about it. But we're trying to get that message out. We'll show you how we're doing that. But suffice to say, we're not only taking the, AM, the, the, the green button connect data from these new AMI meters and showing with transparency in near real time what your use and what your cost is. We're also providing time of use carbon, which is really cool for the very first time, as far as we know, um, of taking that, that interval data and associating it with carbon content on the grid, um, which is available from the ISOs, and, and gamifying it as well. Review boards is just a, a fancy way of providing engagement for folks to see that it is rewarding to manage your energy. Now, and if I only knew how to do that. So we provide uh, the guidance and the notification what to do when, because it's all about time of use. Um, shout out to Con Ed. Con Ed was you know, a great partner in opening up this market by taking on the Green Button Connect protocol, uh, you know, making a program for others where it's not a monopoly type of uh, you know, the capability that we're there, others can participate in this. And that's the beauty of it. Um, imagine like the telecom industry before it was deregulated. We'd all be having like rotary phones till today. But by opening up the data to third parties, you can now have smartphones, you can have, have apps, you can have all sorts of things. You're seeing that happen now with Green Button connecting the data and what it can unlock. And we, we actually in 2021 nominated Con Ed for enabling us to do what we do to the SECC who are here today. And they won last year, so really that's kind of it. Um, some highlights, I just mentioned, you know, late breaking, we just crossed the 10,000 green button authorization the threshold, which is really cool. Um, that's a lot of connected meters, a lot of data. I don't know what that is, but you put it all together when you multiply times, you know, 35,000, you know, whatever. Um, it's, it's big. Uh, average users last summer, from the, just a grid rewards component, earned about 60 bucks if you're in an apartment, 75 bucks is a single family home. We had homes earning over $500, homes close to $1,000, how they manage a home. They get, this is PayPal, they get, a, they get real money for providing a service. Us acting as intermediary as the demand response aggregator, but we're also <laughs> providing them insight on, on, on what to do. And they can also use their dollars and as a ESG, uh, you know, type of capability to make a social impact, donate, donate those dollars. From the app, you can donate your dollars towards a social environmental uh, impact organization. And we see that type of capability is really impactful. A lot of people did that, and um, that will be a continuing story. 
of how communities become climate change leaders. Uh, we also utilize the social media of getting the message out, they're very impactful, whether it's through Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, having a message, bringing it home, making it for everyday people to understand like the value of having this information, what you can do with time of use information that's coming from your utility of all places. So impactful. And especially now, again, with cost to the roof, it's really making a tremendous impact. And we're seeing a lot of traction from the social media capability of that use case from Green Button Connect. Getting great feedback from the folks that are out there. We have a great use case of people calling us. Marge, Marge reached out to us. She's excited. She's like, I really saved a lot of money. I can't believe I just got that PayPal, like, you know, infusion of cash. I see what I, my, my effect is on my carbon footprint. Way to go, logical buildings with, with rewards. So, you know, share that. Um, we have a campaign going on in New York City, getting the word out. We see Shifted Power is our, our brand of showing that it's people now behind the meter that, that have the leverage to change the dynamic of the grid, provide a service, get paid for it, lower your costs. These are real digital signs that are out there in New York City and it's making an impact and it's reaching areas that folks never had the capability to reach. There's 4 million meters in Kana that now have this capability. It's a big deal. And uh, we you know, have uh, over 10,000. Um, we like to tell our folks that small changes add up. It really makes a difference. People can see now, you see on your banking app, dollars going out the door on a daily basis. You can now see that happening with your energy. You will change your habits when you see that. Um, and, and, and what we, we do is, you know, we bring this California now as well. We're excited about California. Thank you, Dan, for setting that stage. Um, the real power of money not to use it. That's what we're getting the message out and using smart devices. We have uh, Samsung announced a uh, partnership with us at CES in Vegas in January. They're linking our capabilities of rewards to smart things as an example of linking AMI data with IoT to reduce CO2. Now we'll conclude with that. If you wanna learn more about, go to the App Store, go to Google Play, take a picture of the QR code. I'm not bashful about some of the buildings, <laughs> but um, you know, but that's what we're about. We're it's consumerizing tech, consumerizing energy, and and making an impact on the environment. Thank you. We're going to hear from from Bob Champagne from Smart Energy Water, and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, about his organization and um, and their. Uh, their roles with Green Button, and also uh, I want to uh, thank Bob. He's our newest sponsor member of the uh, organization, and so we're, we're thrilled to have him on the board. And, uh, and Bob, without further ado, well, thanks, Jeremy. And as Jeremy said, I'm Bob Champagne, and I lead customer experience innovation for Smart Energy Water. Uh, I'm really excited, uh, honored, frankly, to be with this group today, side by side, uh, so many people and companies who I know truly understand um, and embrace the value of customer data, not only its role in redefining customer experience, but also the transformative aspects it's having on our industry as a whole. Uh, you know, all of the things we've been talking about this week at Distribute Tech. Uh, decarbonization, electrification, e-mobility, grid resiliency, really all of it hinges on our ability to quickly tap into customer data and fully leverage those insights uh, on a customer's behalf. And that's something we've been involved in for a long time at SEW. Uh, and I'm looking forward to sharing how we're helping utilities do just that through our smart customer mobile and green button platforms. So I'm gonna share my screen. So I've titled today's presentation, Unlocking the Value of Smart Meter Intelligence. And for SEW, we really see that as a two-part challenge for utilities. Uh, the first is mastering the use of customer data within their existing sphere of influence uh, to help transfer, uh, transform customer experiences and create other uh, sources of business value. Um, but doing that uh, through the functional organizations and existing customer channels that they can influence directly. Um, the second 
part of that equation is to help customers leverage their data outside of the four walls of the utility into the external ecosystems of third parties who are in a position to provide additional value and solve, uh, in many cases, different kinds of problems. Uh, I'll talk about it, both aspects of that with you today, what can be done uh, by utilities through our SEM platform, and what can be further enabled by coupling it with our green button solution. So just a little bit about SEW, uh, we are a global software as a service platform for orchestrating what we call purpose-driven engagement between utilities and the citizens they serve. Uh, what we mean by purpose-driven is that for us, it's more than just streamlining and simplifying the basic uh, things like billing, payments, outage response, things that you should, you'd, uh, you'd see or should see within any credible portal solution. Uh, all of those are vital parts of, a, uh, of digital customer experience. And frankly, no solution does that better or more efficiently than, than SEM. But for us, that's really just the beginning. Um, at our core, we are really about creating new and innovative digital pathways for educating, engaging, and empowering citizens across the world to save energy and water and make substantive contributions as citizens and communities to areas like decarbonization, access to clean water, and many other parts of the climate and clean tech agenda that uh, utilities are frankly in a unique position to influence. So in that respect, we're very outcome driven. We're focused on the results um, that are delivered through our engagement, uh, through customers engagement with our platform, um, rather than just the, the tech and the functionality of the platform itself. And as you can see, we have an extremely broad footprint. We operate in 37 countries. We're reaching over a billion uh, citizens currently worldwide through uh, over 360 uh, client deployments of uh, our platforms. There are three key solutions within uh, our platform. Uh, all of them are designed to work together to truly reinvent uh, the customer experience and drive value across the utility. Uh, the first is Smart Customer Mobile, which is our platform for orchestrating customer experience. It includes our native app and customer portal which we're, we're probably most known for today, uh, powering the native apps of literally hundreds of leading utilities across the globe, uh, consistently ranking at the top of the app store in terms of uh, uh, four and five star ratings uh, from literally hundreds of thousands of customers. Um, the second part of our solution is what we call Smart Mobile Workforce or SMW. Uh, it's a companion solution of sorts to SCM, uh, that orchestrates the assignment, scheduling, dispatch, and closeout of work that's initiated on behalf of customers um, or initiated by or on behalf of customers with the goal of being able to leverage that integration to further streamline and enhance the customer experience. Um, if you've seen the interactions, for example, between Uber drivers and customers, the simplicity of scheduling, the driver confirmation, the in-route tracking, the one-click ratings, that's what we're trying to accomplish uh, with the integration of SMW and SCM. Uh, and our clients think we've really done, and customers think we've really done a, a good job with that. Uh, the third is Smart IQ, which is the intelligence platform that really underpins both SCM and SMW. And it's the engine uh, that we use to collect and manage the customer transactional and uh, usage intelligence needed to what I would call power up and, and take customer experience to the next level. Uh, and it's that usage intelligence that we want to uh, focus a little bit on today. So I mentioned at the outset um, of the presentation that leveraging uses, usage is really a two-part challenge. Uh, the first, which I've illustrated on the left side of this chart, is what our SCM and SIQ platform delivers out of the box to help utilities create value for customers from again, within their uh, direct sphere of influence. Uh, leveraging things like expanded usage visualizations, drill downs, behind the meter load disaggregation, usage and billing predictions, uh, digital home energy reports, water, gas, uh, and electric home energy reports. Um, uh, and a lot more that uh, uh, we can do as utilities to personalize and transform the customer experience uh, 
but it also provides predictive intelligence that uh, powers more personalized and proactive user engagement through things like high bill alerts, nudges to savings tips, and, and best rate uh, plan alerts, uh, as well as more innovative journeys that we are enabling around in-home leak detection and appliance fault monitoring and things that can help utilities to make super creative offers um, uh, around things like home servicing, appliance tune-ups, uh, home maintenance, uh, and a variety of other things. The second part of the challenge, as I indicated before, relates to what utilities can do to help customers take their data outside of the four walls of the utility into the external ecosystems, if you will, uh, of third parties that exist to provide them additional value and solve different kinds of problems. And that's where Green Button comes in. Uh, some examples of this include maybe a retail energy provider that needs customer data to provide the best quote uh, and continuous access to that data so they can ensure customers remain on that uh, best rate or pricing plan and uh, to give them proactive notifications when maybe they're not. Uh, a solar installer who wants to provide a personalized cost benefit to a customer. Uh, energy aggregation initiatives, needing data to develop planning assumptions and uh, ultimately manage their portfolio and the resource adequacy for, for their customers. And a really interesting one that we're seeing across our clients uh, is the need for a commercial customer um, to have uh, carbon tracing um, either, either driven by statutory requirements or their own uh, ESG targets where they need more data from different utilities in the service, from the service areas they operate within to, uh, to ensure that there's uh, standardized and consistent reporting across all of their buildings and facilities. Uh, for those journeys, it's becoming increasingly important to have uh, secure, reliable, and consistent practices in place to manage those exchanges. And, and the real value of Green Button, in our view, is that it provides um, that kind of consistency. Uh, it gives customers the ability to tap new sources of value, but in a way that produces trust and confidence in the utility and the data that's uh, provided. Uh, a little bit on what we're doing to bring these Green Button capabilities to our clients. Uh, there are three aspects to implementing a green button solution as we see it. Uh, the standards and workflows that enable customers to obtain their own data from their utility. Um, uh, those processes that are required to enable the exchange of that data with third parties and the systems that's, uh, that are used to condition and maintain the data needed for these functions to work effectively. Um, all of these process and work and processes and workflows are, are things we've supported since the early days of Green Button. Uh, it's actually an integral part of many of our flagship deployments that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we're now engaged with uh, lots of our existing clients to update their environments to the 3.3 standard. And frankly, many new clients, uh, particularly uh, uh, some in Ontario, who were just starting to introduce to Green Button uh, or where we're just starting to introduce Green Button into their digital uh, CX uh, environment. Um, in the download my data function, for example, we provide the pre-built DMD customer journeys, um, authorization forms and templates, workflows for usage selection and confirmation, authentication APIs, and um, data formatting tools for actually conditioning the data for transfer. For Connect My Data, we offer the same kinds of pre-built tools, journeys, widgets, uh, all to comply with uh, CMD requirements, um, but also the forums, workflows, uh, and so forth for vetting third parties and the backend system for managing and, and administering uh, third party involvement, adding, deleting, monitoring, and so forth. And just as we do with our core usage module, we provide a fully managed data custodian service on behalf of the utility. Uh, that ensures compliance with the latest green button standards and practices. Um, look, there, there are a lot of great companies offering various types of support for green button implementation. Uh, and we have great respect for uh, this entire community. Uh, I, I would uh, just leave you with four things that we believe really differentiate our customer experience in green button platforms uh, 
uh, from what's available in the market um, out there. Um, one is we have a bold vision for what you can do with smart meter intelligence. Uh, we've been deeply involved in this space for well over a decade. Uh, many of us at SEW, like myself, uh, have been involved uh, for much longer than that in uh, previous lives. And I can say that there's no one with a deeper understanding of the use cases that can be powered with this kinds of kind of intelligence and what's needed from a data and analytics sophistication standpoint to really pull it off. Uh, experience operating as a data custodian, the risks at play, the performance standards involved, and the operating best practices needed, something we're already doing for many clients, um, implementing our usage module, where we're already storing, conditioning, and formatting um, incredibly large volumes of data to be served up inside of our usage analytics, um, things like next, next best actions and predictive notifications. Uh, this is not new for us. It's an adaptation of what we, uh, we already do for so many utilities today. Uh, the third is that, um, to use a, a phrase that maybe is overused these days, is that we're customer first and, and um, very customer experience centric. And, and we mean that. Uh, everything for us starts and ends with the customer. Uh, we have a deep understanding of where and how to integrate um, uh, usage and other insights into the customer journeys in a way that actually drives high impact outcomes. Something was spent a long time mastering as uh, evidenced by the ratings that we get uh, consistently from customers um, through the app store and, and uh, awards our clients are receiving and, and, uh, and, and, and comments and, and, and uh, uh, acknowledgements from our, from our clients of what's happening inside of their digital ecosystem. Uh, and then platform driven scalability, the ability through modular additions uh, of our platform to extend new use cases extremely quickly, uh, which is something our platform was really built for, you know, helping utilities grow at the pace they want to meet the needs they have um, and to better service their customers uh, inside of a digital transformation type of initiative, but, but on their time frame and, and, and their terms. And so um, we're very modular, very flexible in that regard. So I'll leave it at there. Uh, leave it there for now. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Jeremy, Syed, and the entire Green Button Alliance for inviting us here today to talk about SCM Green Button and how we're helping uh, redefine customer experience, and and through that making a real contribution to the future of energy and water and and uh, overall sustainability uh, globally. Uh, I'd invite any of you who have questions to stop by our booth and see a demo or just email me or call me directly and I can answer any questions you have and arrange uh, for an offline demo if that's your preference. Uh, thanks again for sharing your time with me and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Bob. Okay, next we have Jay Lewis. Uh, Jay serves as an elected member to our board of directors and uh, his company, Big Data Energy Services, has uh, has uh, been one, was one of the three uh, sponsors of the day today. So we're, we're thankful and, and we're excited to hear what you have to say, Jay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for all the, the great presentations so far. Um, hopefully, I'll do a little bit to get us back on time here. What I want to thank uh, Jeremy and, and Syed. I think they do a great job on providing direction for the green button. Because um, a part of what we're going to talk about here is really why. Right? Why do we? Um, why is green button important? What are we really trying to drive as an organization? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Well, first, I'm Jay Lewis. I'm the CEO of, of Big Data Energy Services. Uh, Big Data Energy Services has been around uh, for quite a while. Um, we've interacted with uh, over 160 different utilities there. Um, we've done a, a bunch of different types of implementations. Uh, we also do uh, other types of data, energy data, um, whether it's pricing, whether it's low profile, uh, line losses, other things you need that you want to put together along with your energy usage uh, that might drive additional value there. We understand what it takes uh, to do these things really well, and which is why we do these um, as data as a service there. One of the reasons um, I asked the question why, well, why is this important? Why do we want to do this? One of the things you see here is 
a lot of time has been spent from data analysts, business analysts uh, time on gathering and cleaning the data. And that's why we believe Green Button is so important. You get that time back. So what you heard a lot of the people talk about today was their implementations, their products, their services actually give you that time back. And that's what we're looking to drive from a Green Button perspective. We're looking to give you that time back because once we give you that time back, it allows you to innovate. It allows you to create new products and new services, allows you to drive additional value. And that's that standard. I think Jeff um, said it earlier, you know, or, or Bob, you know, if you do this for everybody, you know, rising um, tide uh, rises all boats here, that's the goal here as we look to move forward. And historically, you've had a bunch of different formats, right? You sent, submitted LOA, you get this data, one of it comes in a spreadsheet, a CSV, some might come in a PDF, all this different format, and you had to spend that time putting it in. How can you get the value from like, you know, logic buildings, how do you get the value from smart water? How do you get the value from the utility API? If we can standardize that flow of data, then you can drive additional value. One of the things that Syed brought up earlier was can we you know, push it even further? Can we push with ESG? Can we push getting additional value that we can drive uh, more things along the lines and eliminate the bottlenecks, increase that efficiency that we all want to see there? So, so one of the things you sort of see, okay, is this really real? We, we talked a little bit about it, but one of the easiest ones to see is you know, demand response. Uh, a lot of organizations are out there pushing demand response and they're pushing the benefits because they now have a green button. Historically, if you didn't have it, it was a lot of additional work and it took a long time, um, which is why this, you know, it's taken us a, you know, a few years to get to where we are today um, in terms of driving this, this value. Now that folks are able to see a little bit more of what, you know, Jeremy's been preaching for the last seven years or eight years, now we're starting to get that, you know, that benefit today. We're starting to see all the impacts and some of that's technology driven, right? It's the apps, it's the internet of things, it's making it easier, right? It's 5G, getting it access, making it easier to, to drive that value that we all want to see here. You know, one of the things that, you know, for, for me, uh, that brings it home is when you go and you talk to, let's say, a broker or a consultant, or you talk to somebody who's been around, like Bob said, for 35 years, and you go, how did you start this? How did you used to do it? And you go, well, well yeah, we had to, you know, submit this email to somebody. And then when I got the email back, um, then we had to load it. And now you go, wow, I can get it real time. I can get that data. Now I can create a customized pricing for you, right? You think about that. You get a customized price. You want a flat bill? You get a customized flat bill. Uh, that you want a time of use? You get a customized time of use. You actually want to get, you know, your solar proposal? You can do that real time. Those are things, those are the benefits of this green button. It's not just one, it's across the board. And I think Bob said it earlier, or, or Jeff, when you think about other uh, entities wanting to get involved, Samsung, you brought up earlier, other entities saying, hey, if we can put these two things together, what can we drive? We spoke about, um, somebody spoke about uh, grid for c uh, uh, doing some stuff with the enabling uh, alerts. And that's all driven by this green button standard. You get the detail. It's no longer summarized, right? You don't have to get it in one lump sum. I think one person explained it really well. Imagine going to the grocery store and get all your groceries, not knowing what anything costs. Now you are able to get this disaggregation, right? You can now go, hey, what are things costing? And what are the things in my house using? You know, what's using the most? When is it using it? That's all driven by this standard. That's all being able to drive us and bring more value going forward. Validation. Let me make sure I'm getting charged properly. Let me make sure that my bill is right. Let me make sure that this, you know, this service that I'm paying for is accurate. All of these things are being driven by this standard that we're all promoting up here. That's what you see here. We all believe in this benefit um, because we see it. We see the value every day for our end use customers and clients there. So uh, and just closing out um, on big data here, uh, we have over 80 years of experience. You know, we process over 3 billion uh, data points a month. We are SOC 2 type 2. Um, we are a green button member. Perfect. Hopefully, I didn't need to get this back on time. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to say. Here. You did such a great job of getting to the pointed parts as quickly as possible. So uh, thanks. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs>
Spencer Thomas is going to talk to us from Rodent Energy, and he's next up to bat. I'm going to queue up the slides. Take it away when you're ready. Well, thank you uh, very much for uh, having us today, and uh, we're uh, having us be a part of the Green Button Alliance. So we are members, and uh, what I'm going to do, just a brief outline about uh, who we are, uh, why Green Button matters to us as a company, a little bit about our Green Button history, and where we want to work with Green Button and where we're going in the future. So uh, Rodan Energy, we are a leading North American provider of uh, DER asset optimization, uh, demand response, and energy intelligence solutions. Uh, so our company mantra is making sustainable attainable. And what, where we see that is really helping companies, uh, whether it's in the CNI space power uh, distribution companies or uh, energy, uh, uh, power producers, and uh, really making it, uh, you know, sustainability be more and actually accessible to them. So that, you know, there was an important point that was brought up around earlier today about the ease of getting data and making it simplified. And uh, that's a big thing, was how do you make these solutions simpler for a customer to be able to adopt and it to be affordable for them and uh, achievable. So uh, with our uh, uh, renewable and uh, energy storage solutions, uh, we're really uh, using that technology to help uh, manage and optimize uh, distributed energy resources uh, for our customers. And we're active uh, across uh, multiple zones, uh, the ISO, uh, MISO, New York, uh, Hydro, PJM, and in Alberta as well. Uh, and that's where uh, really our sweet spot is, is in these deregulated markets with the services that we provide. So uh, like I said, we, you know, our portfolio is distributed energy resources. Our energy intelligence suite, which is us having a portal for facility level intelligence when we, uh, when we work with uh, different companies and that's you know, single facility and also portfolio wide uh, facility intelligence. And then energy market intelligence, for, uh, which are ISO wide uh, types of intelligence portals and dashboards. We also have a power system engineering metering uh, services and uh, engineering services. Uh, so when I think about what we specialize and why, you know, what's at the heart of why we uh, love uh, Green Button and what it has to offer is we specialize in maximizing energy savings opportunities for uh, our customers through demand side management. So obviously a big part of that is going to be having that data from the customers. Uh, we provide energy as a service tools and demand response. And uh, we have ensured that all uh, distributed generation assets that people have are actually providing the maximum value to the customers, whether it's from a savings perspective or from a usage perspective or uh, how it's going to help them in their uh, ESG and company uh, corporate uh, sustainability uh, objectives. So why Green Button matters to me and, uh, and us is, uh, you know, when we think about our, uh, the facilities that we're working with, uh, it's those uh, corporate sustainability mandates. And I don't think I need to go through the details of this. I think we've covered, you know, where that value is for, uh, for a lot of uh, companies. But it's that, uh, you know, that being energy conscious in your operations, it's managing your energy consumption, it's being able to track uh, your progress and be able to report it uh, properly. So uh, for us and uh, you know, what we monitor and what we're able to do is we wanna shed light on that energy use. So we have the services to do work with companies for energy planning, energy modeling, uh, being, able to coat, uh, being able to model what their optimal energy use should be and being able to uh, measure against that. Uh, and obviously, uh, and then also review their energy use and uh, manage their portfolios. When I think about us on the demand response side, I think everybody knows uh, what demand response is in, as a demand side uh, management tool. Uh, but Green Button is important because as we have the data for each of our demand response customers, uh, the burden of proof is on us as a provider to the, re re to the regulatory agencies to be able to say, you know, how, you know what is the facility's uh, usage data? We need to calculate their facility baseline, and then we have to be able to measure and see how much they are, were able to reduce. So being able to get that data and be able to onboard customers easily so that we can get that data so they can participate in demand response programs and be 
able to get an additional revenue is, uh, is an important asset. So that's why I say great data is so important uh, for us as a demand response provider. Uh, we want to be able to, you know, we need that great data to easily uh, resolve disputes uh, if any come up in terms of payment and to be able to uh, have that portal where we have for uh, customers to be able to visualize their data use and their data performance on those procurement days. So uh, one, of, one of the uh, uh, criteria here is, uh, and one of the you know, challenges uh, that we see when it comes to data and getting that data to our customers is you know, utility firewalls and private VPN networks restricting uh, traditional uh, meter interrogation. So, you know, with that being a, uh, a block when it comes to time, onboarding a customer who is interested in this program uh, could really delay times before, you know, they really want to sign up and before they're able to actually act, uh, participate in a demand response program. Uh, so for us, the, uh, you know, the green button benefits are on all three steps of that DR program. It's that secure, timely access. It's that resolution of the frequency that uh, support the customer's participation, and it's uh, that standards across multiple jurisdictions. So for us, participating in multiple uh, uh, RTOs, uh, really just having that standard is just helping our backend uh, operations uh, team. Uh, so uh, a little bit on just on Green Button's uh, history and uh, where we're going. Uh, so with uh, well, Green Button, we were a part of the Ontario pilot. Uh, back in 2013 and 2016. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, um, London Hydro is going to be talking a little bit later, so I won't be getting into too many of the details, uh, but we participated with London Hydro and Ontario Hydro on that. Uh, there was multiple uh, energy users which were on the residential and commercial side. And, and uh, what we were doing is we were providing our energy advisory services to those customers. So uh, our facility intelligence platform uh, was able to uh, create custom performance models uh, for those businesses, uh, do the energy monitoring and the energy targeting and uh, for, for the customers. And so that's where the heart of that program is where we were using green button data in order to get that uh, for our facility intelligence uh, uh, suite. Some of the uh, challenges that we had with that uh, during that initial pilot was, you know, with the initial spec modifications happening with, within the utilities, obviously there, that would uh, require us to uh, adjust our software development on the back end uh, with those different data custodian implementations. And uh, one big change would, uh, a challenge would be that at the, at the actual customers that were participating, uh, you typically had a champion that was part of that pilot. And whenever you had a change at a company where maybe that champion left, changed jobs, then really getting that same momentum to continue on with the program with uh, new participants was sometimes, a, uh, was sometimes a challenge. So, you know, naturally with a pilot program, it sees a natural end. And I think that um, we would say it was quite a successful pilot and it really left a lot of excitement within the utilities to be able to continue that. We've obviously seeing that London Hydro has never, you know, stopped in its uh, excitement with that program and the potential with Green Button. And uh, that's why we're excited uh, to have seen uh, the changes in Ontario that have happened with the Ontario Ministry of Energy's uh, mandate uh, for the green, the green Button across the province. Uh, so that's great news. And that's, uh, that means that you know, we have potential with so many customers and we're going to have a lot more use cases where we're going to be uh, working with customers uh, to try to get that green button data over time. Uh, so again, uh, it's uh, London Hydro that we're going to be working with and our development teams are you know, working with our software in the back end to uh, work with the new standard. And we're also working with uh, ComEd as well in terms of uh, uh, some programs there as they're implementing their green button standard. Uh, so the, both of those are in the development stages, but we're uh, excited to see uh, where else that's going to go and how we can continue to have that as a standard implementation in, in our facility intelligence and demand response uh, portfolio. Uh, so uh, with that, that was uh, all I wanted to uh, go through today, just a little bit about us and really, uh, really proud member of the Green Button Alliance. Thank you for that great presentation. Hayden's going to come up. Next here, we're going to uh, get her all set up with this microphone.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. We're excited to be here in Dallas. It's quite warm here as compared to Calgary, where it is still snowing, and I'm still able to hit the ski hills and go skiing and snowboarding almost in June. So happy to be here today. So I was trying to think of something that everyone in the room would have in common, and I thought that something very evident would be our awareness and appreciation for the green button. I did not expect it to be that 99% of you are from Ontario. <laughs> so Americans, thank you for having us. <laughs> so when I think about green button, my journey began about two years ago. I was working in a customer information and billing system company here within Harris Utilities, and we had a handful, or I'll say, as Lori might know, four handfuls of customers that informed us they needed to become green button compliant by 2023. So immediately I kind of thought high level, what does that mean to us? And it was an export in my mind. It was an Excel export of data. And then I thought, well, what do you do with that next? And I thought of what I do with my data, what I usually do with my data, I guess, until I started working in the industry, is put it in an Excel document, make it into tables and charts and see how you're doing. Look at the peaks and valleys and determine how to adjust your consumption. Well, boy, was I wrong. And that's what I'm here to talk to you. About today. So the title of the presentation here is Beyond the Button. So we all are aware of Green Button, what it's doing, how it can be used, but we want to talk about taking that one step further today and how everything now is about innovation. So it's making that data insightful and actionable for your customers. So that's what we're going to kind of groove through here a little bit today is making the data useful, innovating, actionable for your customers so you can better serve the utilities. Okay, so a little bit of background about myself here. So Caitlin Freemark, Director of Marketing with Silver Blaze Solutions, hailing to you from Calgary, Alberta again. So thank you for having me. Originally, though, I will say to the people in the room from Ontario, a small town, Renfrew. So nice to be joining all of you down here. So I've been with Harris Utilities for about 10 years now, spending my career, started about eight years in meter data management, moving into customer information, utility billing systems, and now most recently self-service web portal mobile applications for utilities. So having me rep be uh, the representative for Silver Blaze on the panel was a, a no brainer from my company's perspective because I can truthfully say I'm passionate about the customer experience. So Silver Blaze, for those who are not familiar, Silver Blaze is a division of Harris Utilities, which is a member of the Harris Computer Systems family. So we have a timeline there at the bottom if you can read that font, but just to put it together nicely and briefly for you, Silverblaze and Aclara Ace were web leading self-service solutions for customers within the marketplace. So in about um, 2020, 2020, the accurate number there on the slide, Harris acquired Silverblaze shortly thereafter to acquire Clara's ACE, Adaptive Consumer Engagement Platform. Silverblaze is very focused on self-service, so viewing your bills, paying your bills, having smart forms, all that good stuff. Aclara was very focused, the ACE portal, on conservation and efficiency. So as late as last year, we thought, why not marry the two solutions together and create a very strong industry-leading solution? So there, just across the top are some stats. We have together about 30 years of experience serving the marketplace, working with many different vendors, partners, et cetera, integrating solutions together, and are now the exclusive portal offering of all Harris Utilities companies. So at a core, I think we can all think of a web portal solution. It might be what you're used to from a decade decade, two decades ago, kind of back towards the left-hand side of that timeline you just saw, is bills consumption. So viewing your bills, your transactions, making payments, but really all of the presentment within the solution had a lot to do with that once a month register read. Well, that is not the case anymore. The reason that that is not the case is what we quantify as these three factors across the top. So the emergence of your smart technology, your smart meters. With those smart meters come more data than ever before. You have your five minute, 15 minute, 60 minute interval data. So it's no longer just that once a month register that you used to bill off of. We also have lots of programs and regulations that are coming and emerging in the marketplace, such as why we're here today, the Green Button Initiative. And last the focus on conservation and efficiency. So working to conserve our precious resources and ensure the stability of the grid. So when we think of those factors and how we're actually going to accurately and effectively present these details to the marketplace, there's one com prominent trend that's kind of coming about today, and that's personalization. So when I think about my experience with a company, with a utility, et cetera, I think the best possible customer experience is one where the utility need not be involved. 
So it's going to be so custom to me and involve all my data across the means of communications that I so choose and prefer to receive them across to not even have to speak to an individual. Quite frankly, I become a little bit upset when I know that I have to reach the end of my journey and I have to pick up the phone and call that person to give me some help. So that's one thing that we're really factoring in when we're creating our solutions today. I'm happy to see that you all are doing as well is that personal touch on everything. So communicating with the customers, how they want to be communicated, whether it's an IVR message, a text, an email in a timely manner and giving them the data that they need to best serve themselves. So how are we doing that? So first of all, with Green Button, Silverblaze has a solution deployed in the market that's working as a great framework as we continue to take on customers that are following with the initiative. So it was developed about four years ago for one of our large prominent customers in the United States, and actually today is being leveraged again in Ontario with our partners Earth and Savage Data. So we have a really great framework in place that's easy, easy to use and replicable at other utilities. Some other things that we're doing is we're taking the data, not just from the exports, making it available to the customers, to their partners, et cetera, but adding in features and functionalities within our own portal to make things more robust and personalized to the customer. So now with the introduction of that smart meter data, we have the commercial and industrial models or residential models, et cetera, that allow customers to analyze their 15, 60 minute interval data and see how they're performing. We also have a wealth of solutions under a ways to save module, which include items like rate comparison. So you're able to see how you perform on one rate plan versus the other while factoring in small, medium and large behavioral changes, as well as providing customers with a library of tips and tricks that are specific to themselves, their demographic, their household size, the number of residents, et cetera, on how to save and conserve on energy and water. And actually furthermore, set up some targets there as to how much they wish to save on their bills and consumption on an annual basis and implement it from there. And lastly, the notifications as well. So just ensuring that we're communicating with our customers across multiple different engines, multiple different ways, IVR, text, event-driven, threshold, usage-based, etc. And that's kind of how we're, we tie things up here today. So we are working on our green button compliancy, continuing to implement it throughout the market. But further to that, what do we do with the data after really ensuring that we are creating and delivering a personalized experience to our customers. And I know we work closely with many of you service and solutions providers here in the room. We're happy to continue to do so as we create a personalized experience that really unifies all of those solutions, integrates the pertinent utility solutions for the customer so that we have mobilized them to engage in the actions we wish for them to engage in and they wish to engage in for their own benefit all while realizing the return on investment in their smart infrastructure technology. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Appreciate it. That was a great presentation. And now, joining us remotely, is Zoran Stajanovic of London Hydro. Zoran? I want to thank everybody for uh, making a meeting today and staying till the end because I know the happy hour is starting soon. So, uh, Zoran Stajanovic, uh, working uh, as the Director of Information Systems for London Hydro, I've been part of a big button journey, I would say, from the very beginning, from its inceptions. So what you see here is our journey. Uh, first of all, we are an Ontario-based utility servicing city of London for about uh, around 165,000 customers for water and electricity. Uh, and uh, also Green Button Alliance uh, sponsor member. Uh, on the slide, uh, I really want to see that our work does pay off. And I want to second what Bob mentioned. It's really great to see everybody in the same room sharing ideas. I think that doesn't happen very often. So I am a little bit jealous for not being there. Uh, from London Hydro side, I'm um, just going to focus on 2017 and 22. Do have some exciting news to share. Uh, aside from being a founding member, uh, we have uh, invested in Green Button as our development platform. Um, uh, I don't know if uh, many of you know, we are uh, also a service provider for our utilities. Uh, our customer engagement portfolio has been adopted and it's been adopted by many utilities uh, in Ontario and North America. And uh, as a recent couple of highlights, uh, um, uh, we have also completed the Ontario 3.3 um, certification. So I do want to thank uh, Green Button Alliance team for all the effort that they put uh, to make the test suite uh, as robust and as detailed as it needs to support the 
the future of Ontario energy data. Um, also on the bottom, you can see utilities that we collaborate with. It's also is utilized when it has been certified as a couple of days as well. So it's from Ontario and we are uh, planning to keep it going that way. So really, um, this is the picture from November 1st when the Minister came to London Hydro to acquire Innovation Center. Uh, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, some of you had a chance and were able to make it. Uh, this is the um, um, uh, simulation site where we have a green button uh, in, in real time that uh, works. We have a residential and commercial site. And what we're demonstrating here is he said with, uh, with a great mask. Uh, showcasing what the uh, uh, real uh, new real time and real time data can do when it's enabled and shared with third parties, and that's a minister and the mayor of the city of London. So this was at the time of the, uh, when we announced that implementation. So uh, about London Hydro's customer engagement portfolio, which is based on Green Button platform, um, uh, we have been. Um, we are a true believer in customer excellence and self-service as well. I think Caitlin just talked about it. I didn't like the statement, as you said, that the best experience is where you exclude the utility, but I think utility can be as good. Um, just a joke, you can't see my smile. Um, so, so about uh, our applications, a uh, very from corporate uh, website, Refresh, ARDA, my account, uh, commercial, industrial, and uh, the latest and greatest winner is our Trickle Mobile app that is also a green button app. And uh, I just recently returned from uh, CS Week where our application has been recognized as the best customer engagement uh, um, uh, application and utilities for the 2022 CS Week. And it is a green button app. So it really shows here that the green button not only helps customers but also can help utilities innovate and move on that. Uh, digital journey. Talking about the uh, collaboration and digital uh, journey, we have also uh, partnered with Enbridge, which is a gas utility in, in Ontario and, and wider. And uh, what I wanted to showcase here is also green button power creation for a hybrid heating. Uh, trickle the app that I just mentioned, it's used as the main tool for customers to see their part, uh, their part and what they can do in becoming green. Uh, this is one of the easiest way uh, by adopting uh, hybrid heating to do your part as a residential uh, uh, user and uh, green button data is powering this experience in this pilot. And another great news is that the uh, ministry just recently announced they're going to be expand, expanding this pilot across Ontario. So there'll be more heat pumps and more uh, savings coming, uh, coming uh, this way. So in a nutshell, uh, uh, Green Button Platform has been our development innovation platform. Uh, it really on the top, you see what it really means for us as utility. It's about us becoming digital. Uh, we believe that we cannot innovate alone. So um, uh, we always welcome third parties, but only as a third party uh, um, as the applications for our customers, but also as a third party innovators that can be integrated in our um, portfolio and our customers offering. It's really about the visibility and transparency of the data. I think about the difficulties in supporting demand response. And I think this really is being able to have that standardized way to support that important uh, line of, uh, of uh, uh, demand response and, and uh, uh, conservation. Data aggregation, we are a proud supporter of universities, local universities, and Ontario universities. Uh, every year we have about uh, eight to ten students. Uh, thank you, Sam, for that. That keeps us busy quite a bit. But really, the always university is always a need for data, uh, open aggregated data, and this is going to also solve those issues. Um, as long as Hydro, we also worked in incorporating any data stream. Uh, we work from monthly reads to in real time, and really, Green Button has been the, the one of the pillars to help us uh, deliver the innovation through the exciting projects. Uh, not only with the peer utilities that you have on the side, but also with the uh, Ontario Energy, Enercan, and, and other, other um, government-funded programs. So as mentioned, we have completed our certification, uh, um, and we're currently in the process of 
testing it with the third parties. Um, I saw Jay, Jay looking really good. I like the outfit. <laughs> and uh, so Big Energy Data Services is one of the third parties. And it's currently connected and uh, utilizing the uh, one of uh, Hydro's Connect My Data to service their customers. And as well, Rodan. Rodan is our local uh, leader as well. And uh, we're completing the integration and uh, most importantly, they got be exposed to the latest and greatest with the retail schema um, right out of the gate. Those are just some of the exciting, uh, exciting news that I uh, have to share with everybody. Again, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it this year. Uh, uh, and uh, please help tell us to win tonight. And thank um, <laughs> you for everybody's time and staying late to hear the updates from one night. Thank you, Zoran, and um, I apologize for the technical uh, glitches. We, uh, we'll get it right to next time. I'm sure we will. <laughs> that concludes the official part of our uh, event. We're here to, uh, for you to ask the experts the questions that, uh, that we're burning and, and you wanted to know about each of their platforms, each of their solutions, uh, each of their utilities in, in some cases. So uh, feel free to holler out something and we'll, uh, we'll get you a mic and you can attempt to make it work. You have a question back in, in the back? Hi, everyone. I mean, great, really, you know, listening to all you experts to your presentation. Uh, but I think my question is more around, obviously, not all the utilities are connected to the green body and, I mean, using the green body specs, right? So for those utilities, how do you all typically, like, you know, service, you know, customers, I mean, connected to the accounts? So your question was um, around um, companies that might not have green button and how do you include them in the in the same kind of journeys and I think that's that's uh, very key to how we think about customer experience. I think when you implement a portal solution, I think the I think the portal and the customer experience solution is the most important part of it because without the customer experience usage data is is just an enabler right and so you know create the user journeys create the user experience create the opportunity to to bring meter data into the journeys figure out how to do that within your standard customer journeys and then kind of separately but in a related way look for ways to then connect that data out into the ecosystem because I, because I think what, what Green Button really excels in is, is taking that data and leveraging it further. There's a lot you can do with data, independent of Green Button, for your customers inside those customer journeys. It's when you want to extend the value of that data that, that you start to look at the real advantages of Green Button and bring it into, into other um, parts of the ecosystem. Uh, Mira from Utilismar, I just want to add uh, to what Bob said. It's the uh, there's always there's always going to be a, a third party, as we call them in a, in a green button terminology, that will not have the expertise to develop apps, program things, and uh, and for that reason, uh, there is uh, something that we've thought about and implemented, which is the portal for let's say, let's call them small energy consultants who are providing various different consulting services, but they, they will never have capability, or maybe not in the foreseeable future, to develop various solutions uh, that allow them to manage the data. So think about um, those energy consultants logging on to a specific dashboard and requesting, clicking the button, requesting the data, and data comes back in some type of Excel format that they can utilize on their desktop to, to create various different assessments, energy retrofits, and provide uh, uh, offering to, um, to the utility as well as their own customers. Thank you again online for joining us, everyone. And thank you everyone in the room for joining us and uh, speakers, of course, and our sponsors uh, for the day, uh, Smart Energy Water, London Hydro, and Big Data Energy Services for making it possible for us to do this today. Uh, last words here from Syed. And I wanna make sure I wanna thank oh. this guy. <laughs> you know, personally, himself, Jeremy, Don, and Valdez who couldn't be here without GBA staff. We could not be, we couldn't have done this, right? I mean, especially during COVID, 
I know there was a reduction a little bit on their efforts, and but they kept on putting down. These guys live and breathe. It's in their blood. <laughs> and the green button, they, they're passionate. Valdez just can't. You know, when I get on the phone for, to call her, I'm usually 30 minutes on the call. So that's by the way. Don spends a lot of time uh, and late hours to work on Jeremy is multitasker. So, I mean, without the staff, we wouldn't be here today. And I really want to thank your efforts and we look forward to and we're in, in good shape uh, right now with your participation. Thank you very much, all the speakers for the time and for people online for, for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today.